Hi, welcome back to the farm. My name's Roz, also known as Passion Flower, and you'll find me here each week talking about my farming and creative life. Well, there's a saying, make hay while the sun shines. Well, this week I haven't been making hay, but I have been doing something every day, a farm thing while the sun shines, and that is spraying blackberries. So we got the rig late last week, and we have had the perfect weather for spraying blackberries. So for four mornings in a row, I have gotten up reasonably early and I have gone out for the morning to spray. So the days have been cool in the morning, getting hot into the afternoon. They have been very still and the humidity has been low. So all of those things combined is a really good combination for getting the spray on and for it to be effective because as the day gets hot, uh, the plants soak up the, the spray and the water that you've put onto it and it gives the best chance of the, the poison being effective. So first I tackled an area that we didn't get to last year. There's quite a large clump in our bush area which is quite close to the road. So that was the first area that we ended up doing. Then I went into another area of the bush and it was what we had done last year. Um, and so all of the dead canes are still there but you can sort of see in now to where we may not have reached or that have grown back since then. And it was much easier to get into and to really focus on those areas. So that was another day. And then I spent two days in our One Tree Hill paddock. Um, it's a bit more spread out, so it took a bit longer. It was sort of like stop and start to move around a little bit. But there were some large clumps that we hadn't gotten to last year or that have grown since. So um, I worked on that. Adam also took it out for a session as well and he concentrated on another part of the bush and one of our driving tracks. So combined, we've done five sessions of spraying, which is quite a lot considering we only got the spray rig last week. As I said, while the sun shines, you've got to get it done. So we are really pleased with our progress so far. Um, it's going to be a really hot weekend, so the plan is that we will probably do some more then. If we have the energy, um, my arms and my shoulders are quite sore and my hands, because you're um, spraying, you're holding down the, the spray gun, the pressure on your hands builds up and it, it becomes quite stiff and sore. So uh, we'll see how we go. But um, yeah, really pleased with what we've been able to get done so far. Before we could get into that first area of bush, we had to clear a tree out of the way. I think that's part of the reason why we hadn't kind of tackled it before. It was a hard area to get into with um, the spray unit. But um, there is a path, a track, but um, it had been uh, worn away a little bit with um, some flooding, and we'd, but we'd been able to fill that in with some dirt uh, throughout this past year. So that made one section much easier to get into. And then a tree had fallen over another part, which meant that we couldn't actually drive all the way through. So we got out the evening before we planned to start spraying and we cut that tree off the track, cleared it all back so that we had room to drive in. Despite it being quite warm, there's been quite a lot of growth in my shed garden, lots of flowers uh, and things are progressing quite well. I think the balance of the dew in the morning and the cooler mornings and then the sun has given the plants an opportunity to get a little bit of water and get some growth going. And I've also noticed that in the paddocks now too, there is a little bit of green regrowth starting to happen. It's gonna be a while before they become properly green, but there has been a little bit of regrowth in the grass. The Thai mint that I have growing is doing really, really well, except for the side closest to the sheep paddock. So Hurley, he has a super long neck, is able to stick his neck out through the holes in the fence and he's eaten a section of that plant down. So now that seems to be the spot where I know that nothing can be um, planted closer to the fence than that 
or he will be able to eat it. So the sheep's paddock is very dry now. Uh, there is that little bit of green coming back up, but it's still very short. So they uh, are not getting a ton of uh, grass from the paddock. So every night I give them some grain, but I'm also giving them a bag of hay every day now as well, which they really, really love. So I hang that in the shelter for them uh, and that is supplementing their feed while the paddock is not being terribly productive. Super weird though, my backyard is still lush green grass. I guess it's got nothing eating it um, and it does get a bit of shade. So it's um, one of the only green areas on the farm at the moment. It's really, really strange. So it needed to be mowed. Um, and I got the push mower in and did the really tricky section around near the stairs, um, right close to the house. Uh, there's a, the air conditioning unit and the, the stairs. It's sort of, you can't get the, um, the ride on in there. Then I went to get the ride on mower out. And twice when I went to get the mower out, it just started to pour rain, like really heavy. It didn't end up being for very long both times, but it was enough to just wet the ground. And it, so I'm like, oh. Go do it, no, go do it, no. So Adam came up with a brainwave. He opened up the side gate and he let Potsy and Preston in to, to graze on the grass, which is fine, you know, way you can stay inside for a little while and, and the cows can eat the grass in the paddock. So they were able to get it down reasonably well in a, in a couple of hours uh, just to keep it under control. We might pop them back in there again in a day or so just to do that again. Uh, but again, that was a nice way to actually use the grass and not get the mower out, considering I tried a couple of times and uh, they got a good feed out of it. And you might be wondering why I haven't put the sheep into that area. We had once tried to put the goats in there with Twyla next door. So they're like right side by side. And Twyla was not happy with the goats at all. Whereas she is very content to have the, um, the cows right beside her. Her um, yard faces out towards the paddock where the cows are. And she has no problem with um, going right up beside them and sniffing them. And then she barks at them to make them do what she wants. But it's not an aggressive bark and it's not her distressed about something invading her space. Whereas with the goats, she just did not cope at all. So there was no way that I could put the sheep in there but the cows was totally fine. Not too much to show this week, yarn and dyeing wise. I did all that the last couple of weeks and this has been the boring week of um, doing their website stuff and photo editing and all that kind of thing. Something that I have done though, is that I've updated my website to include a free patterns page. I have two free patterns at the moment. I have a star decoration, maybe not the right time of year for that, but it's um, up there on my website and also my cow neck poncho, which I'm wearing today. So this is uh, a design that is free on my website. It's a cute little poncho that takes one skein of my lace weight yarn for my size. Um, if you'd want to make it bigger, you'd probably need two skeins. Uh, which just and there's instructions in the pattern for just making it wider at the top before you knit down and you can make it to any length you want and then there is a ruffle at the bottom then you just need to weigh your yarn at the end so that you know how much you need to finish off the ruffle at the bottom so yeah i updated my site so that i now have a free patterns page i will put a link to it below and you can go check out my cow neck poncho pattern Still haven't had a lot of crafting time this week, but I did take some time and work on my Mrs. Tumnus shawl. I have now done about, I think it's about 15 rows of the lace. There's one repeat there. And I feel like I'm making real progress. I think the lace pattern is about 39 rows. So I'm close to being halfway through. Um, and I haven't lost track of the pattern because I've got my markers in place and I was able to sit quietly. 
I actually, in the afternoon after doing some spraying, I got out my bean bag and I sat out on the deck in the shade. By the afternoon, there was a little bit of a breeze and it was lovely to just sit and quietly knit away on this project. So again, it's going quite slowly, but I'm really happy with the progress that is being made on this one. And I've made progress on both of my pairs of socks. First, my single sock on my Feels Like Home colorway. I have just done a little bit more of the foot. It's sort of been the end of the day, evening, watching TV project. And also my two at a time socks on the Shibui sock. Again, a little bit more progress. This would almost be a full foot if it was just a single sock. Um, but yeah, I'm getting a little bit more done on that one as well. I've also been doing some spinning this week, which I've really enjoyed. It's funny, on warmer days when it's not humid, I actually really enjoy just taking the time in the afternoon to maybe spin for 15, 20 minutes. Um, the, the spinning wheel kind of provides a little bit of um, air circulation and it is a nice way to sit inside and sort of watch the world go by a little bit. Um, I had to concentrate too hard um, on a pattern or anything um, and just really, and I'm enjoying the colour of this one at the moment. It's by Besheba Farms and it's a beautiful uh, pink, peach, orange kind of sunset sunrise kind of thing it's quite a summery feel um so i am just spinning it um all onto one bobbin i haven't actually decided what i'm going to do with it yet but i'm just enjoying the the fiber and i'm enjoying how it's looking on the bobbin um i'm thinking i will probably just chain ply it and keep it by itself I have looked into keeping it as a single, so I'll see what the um, what it looks like once I've finished the whole thing and maybe read up a little bit about that. I've taught myself how to spin and I haven't done any classes on finishing or how to spin for a particular style, so I'm not even sure if it will work um, and I don't want to ruin the fibre, so I may not do that with this one. Um, I will look through my fibre stash and see if there's something that I can ply it with. Uh, but I don't really want to ruin these colours, so I think it probably will end up being a chain ply. Well, that's it for another week. Thanks for spending some time with me. If you're enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I look forward to seeing you next week on the farm. Bye.